All right, welcome. If you joined us, thanks so much. Really appreciate it for group nine. Such a twenty-five. Group nine. Woo! <laughs> oh, get excited! I'm super yeah. excited. Okay, you're recap. all going to die down here. Yeah, you're all I'm going. Super excited to watch my party die in the main chamber. You were all going to die. Um. Okay, so what did we do on? How the F does this group not have a name? It's literally you talking. That's the oh, <laughs> oh, damn. I'm sorry. I thought I was on Saturday commenting on Doosome's Dying. My bad. Oh, I see. I got you. <laughs> um, so last session, uh, well, now we're going to have a chat chat off here. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so we start, we were actually pretty, we were actually separated, right? So we, were, we had a separation uh, based on what had happened uh, to to. Uh, a familiar dwarf, right? So we had this poisoning thing happen. We then went from trying to uh, help them and it really was just like chaos because we had people going their own separate ways. And then eventually we ended up back towards the cathedral, right, of the, of the sun tree. Uh, and that allowed us uh, to kind of get ourselves together because there was numerous different NPCs like the the watch commander, right, Wrangler Uku, uh, and try to arrest you, Jax, with the horse thing. And then, but they were like, fine, you're going to do something, whatever, do it, right? Do something for the good of the city. You're, you're, you know, kind of not like, like meeting you kind of halfway going, you know, you're better off not sitting in a jail cell rotting. You might as well do something of value because shit's going down, right? And so they kind of went from being like a watch commander to being like the actual first commander of a Talthar regiment that they were before, right? So like, that's kind of the difference between the two sides of their character that they're like action. Okay. We're doing action. I'm not the watch commander anymore. <laughs> we're at war. <laughs> right. Um, and then, uh, Valria was, was the biggest thing there, right? The high Sunbringer Valria. This is the, uh, head of the hierarchy of the order of light. These are the people who, uh, run the temples, the cathedrals of the Tal Thar kingdom, they are those that to take care of the sun tree. They're the most divine followers of clerics uh, to Palor and Light. Uh, and Valria, still alive. They were healed, right? And showed a lot of the Valiant Virtue Knights were slain. Um, and that uh, the actual dwarf, Crespa, was no longer there. Okay. Now, conversations were had particularly in secret. This was from Kanan, the direction of Kristoff. And that enlightened Kanan into some motivations and some other things. And then also, uh, really where you're at currently is some of the information that was provided. And so we're tiptoeing down the line of how much were we sharing on either side, what's kind of being passed around. And so in the end, regardless of what has been said or what hasn't been said, we're here because we're here to put an end to what is causing problems with the sun tree. We're here to put an end to these potential of, of evil you know, disappearances if they're connected, right? Uh, we're here because of what has happened to Crespa. We're here because of what has been done to Valria, right? So we're kind of continuing down the motions of following the rabbit hole, right? And we've now kind of gotten into the rabbit hole and we're going to see where we kind of come out. Um, and that is because we're in combat, right? So I said we're in the rabbit hole now. These creatures that are in front of you are kind of vile construct creatures. They're stitching of leathers and bone, and then they have uh, very kind of rugged movements to them that are slow and like not methodical, but just really blunt as they're kind of coming through. And so they're very easy to hit, but they're durable. And so they're kind of taking your blows and then underneath some of the flesh, they might have some mechanical pieces as well uh, that reinforce them. Now we have an ice wall that was created by you, Donlin, using the axe uh, of the king, Grimar, Yilfing, and the family line showcasing how powerful it actually is that you can just take the axe and create ice walls with them wherever you want realizing that you just give me an ice wall an ice wall um and you have sectioned off uh, a, a kind of a chamber in the eastern side where baxter currently lies prone with wrappings of bondage over top of them that strap him to the table 
Uh, they appear to be unconscious, uh, but it's difficult to tell with the ice wall right now of how they are. Are they breathing? Are they dead? We just don't know. And then we have <clears throat> a person, a humanoid that stands medium size. They have a Plague Doctor-like mask, blackish robe. They've come out and they've showcased very powerful magic that they've just unleashed upon you all. This is essentially their end of their turn, right? They just unleashed that lightning bolt and they're going to end their turn here. And upon that, we're going to have it unpaused, cycle through in the turns. Wow, that's really funny. Adam, you ready? If you're not ready, you're ready. Right, <laughs> right into it. Well, there we go. Woo. Um, I only have one thing left to figure out. Uh, what is his range? Uh, so normally it's 30 feet for a sling, right? But does he have, like, sniper or anything? Uh, so... Uh, currently, I do not believe they have sharpshooter. Uh, no, they do. It does they have sharpshooter. Sharp yep, yeah. sharpshooter. So they can get the sling out to, I believe, 60, 60 or 90. Let's see. 120. 120. 120. Okay, 120. Oh, boy. Nice. All right. That is a long way for a slingshot. But I respect it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's only sixty feet. <clears throat> All right, he is going to take a shot at this gentleman who just nuked us. Okay. Your last turn on. Yeah. All right. Wow. Great start. Okay. I like it. All right, so you send off the first slingshot. You can see them as they move their hands. They're kind of moving, and they see the bullet kind of come through, and they're just kind of, kind of getting out of the way of it, seeing it's a long draw as you whip it through. I'd also say, too, that you have a little bit of a cover issue, right, based on the staircase kind of coming down. I'm letting Lance probably fling as much as they want, but they did argue yeah. to, to not be hit by the lightning. So. That's fair. Although I think because of sharpshooter, it has to be full cover. It doesn't matter anyway, right? Yeah, that's what I'm I'm alluding to, right? That we're not really playing at all with anything. Uh, and so that missed, right? That's correct. That's a miss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's got one more attack. Uh, he will okay. do that. All right. The next attack is a 19. Uh, that is going to hit. You can see them. Trying to kind of sidestep the other way, they take 20 points of bludgeoning and thunder damage as it invokes kind of crashing with a large shudder of sound as it echoes into the tunnel behind them. Uh, yeah, I don't think he really has... Uh, let's see, because that one costs more than just a bonus action. Yeah, just so can't use that one. Uh, I will make that last attack... Uh, no, nah, never mind. I won't do that. Uh, that'll end his turn. Okay. All right, Don, you're up next. All right, let's kill this thing. So, be mindful you are still grappled. Creature has hold you. It's putting you against the wall. Get back and do the yeah. corner! <laughs> That's fine. I have disadvantage anyway, so. All right, uh, 24. Yeah, try not being tiny. Why did that not roll a disadvantage? Uh, let's see. You were you holding it down? Uh, no, but I'm grappled, so I thought it was automatically gonna. Grapple does not impose disadvantage automatically. It's restraint. Um, restraint imposes disadvantage automatically. Okay. I'll roll one more time. See if I miss. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna hit. Let's take the first damage. So 17 points of damage. You cut through with the, the axe, slicing in between them. You can see them now, kind of enraged, right? And you come through with the axe as you slice through. They kind of groan as they smash into the table, crushing with its weight. They let you go as they depart. The grasp is difficult to remove. I'm gonna walk over here and. We're gonna swing away. It's all for disadvantage, right? Uh, I, believe, I believe it's control. Control for disadvantage. 
Uh, it's going to be a straight roll because they are restrained right now. So it's going to cancel out the two, right? So straight roll coming through. You do have a plus one to the flank. So 27, 27 hits. You do 11 points of slashing damage as you come through. Slicing to the left side of the creature in its abdominal region. So your lower stature. It takes the blow. Um, shakes moving left and right. My turn. All right, we now come to uh, this creature here. Looks towards you, Kanan. It is going to go in for a meaty slam. All the meat. For sack misses, you brace yourself against it, holding the meaty fist. The second fist comes lower and right towards your gut. That is Remind me. You. What? We were. Because we were in combat before, so I would have figured this out. Did these attacks seem to count as magical attacks last time? Uh, there, I don't believe we got to anything like that. However, you have used your reaction, mm -hmm. so I know that you used energy resistance. Uh, on the lightning bolt, yeah. I just couldn't remember bolt, if we so. had already discovered that or not. Um, I think that you have an understanding that there is uh, something magical that is gearing or powering these creatures, and that might pose uh, to be magical attacks as they come through with their slams. Uh, you might have enough knowledge. Yeah, because, well, I'm, re I'm resistant anyway, so that's why I was asking, because of the, the crown. Yeah. Yeah, and so you're going to find out here when the, tw the 21 comes through, it's going to come straight through for 13 points, right? So mm -hmm. I think we did, you did get hit, and you, you were like, oh, it's That's what I was thinking, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying okay. to figure out. Yeah. <clears throat> so it kind of gets you right the lower right side of the abdominal region. You take the blow, and that's going to be the end of the creature's turn. Jack's your next. All right. Uh, I want to say I was shooting at the creature in front of Kanan to try to get him out of the doorway give him a spot to move potentially. So I'm going to Elders blast at the uh, dude in front of, uh, in front of Kanan again here. Oof. You're, oh you're, God. you're art, you're at melee yeah. range. Huh? You're at With melee range. Well, you're, you're in melee range of other creatures. You'd have disadvantage on your, your attack here. Yeah, well, I rolled right. a natural one anyway. Yeah. So we're going to have to take, we got to take it either way, baby. So not anybody in your way, particularly just the enemies. And so what happens is there's a lot of like hitting of hands and a lot of shaking of these slam attacks, right? They're coming around and so you're trying to concentrate your blast through and you just get knocked off balance back into the wall. Um, F man, I'm kind of in a bad spot here. Uh... Am I? I think I'm able to take my bonus action to dodge, correct? Uh, you can take your bonus action to, I believe, dash, disengage, and dodge. And dodge, right? That's what I'm tracking. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I always have to remind myself. No, dash, nope, disengage, hide. or hide. Yep, so you yeah, can't dodge, dodge is your bonus. Bonus dodge is a monk thing. Um, Dude, oh, it is a monk thing? You do have a... You have a second attack, though. I I know, but like if I'm at disadvantage, the way I've been rolling this time, <laughs> you've already declared um, the Eldritch Blast, though, which means you it's 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 already free based on your level. So you you oh, you're gonna okay. have to take it anyways, oh, yeah. regardless. Okay, so it's control. We said, yeah, you're gonna hold yeah. down control and unleash it. It should. Um. No, that make sure I don't, in I don't configure controls. My... Yeah, I don't. It didn't roll disadvantage, obviously. Yeah, it's all right. Really cool. Twice. Just you want me to roll it one more time? Sure. I don't. I don't know if fifteen hits or not. Yeah, we'll go ahead and roll one more time, and then if you're gonna use your bark inspiration on either one, you can just we can manually roll the die. That's fine. All right. So the the fifteen is going to be the attack roll. There. Yeah. Are you gonna use your bark inspiration die? Yeah, why not? I'll go ahead and use it. Okay, so it is a d6 because it's given D6, to you by the right? crown. Yep. So you're going to roll a main d6 and I'll take off the break. Oh my there. god, <laughs> man. Uh, so that is going to be a 16 and that will hit the creature. Uh, you do 13 points of force damage. Jesus Christ. That one. Okay, and then for my I don't, I don't really want to use fast hands for this. I can't do much else. Um, 
yeah, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and end my turn here and get ready. Okay, uh, this creature is restrained, sees the blast coming from you in particular, so it's going to take a slam attack. It's going to divide them up between you, Jax, and you, Kane, so the first stack comes for you, Jax. At disadvantage, 20 will hit you. You take 11 points of bludgeoning damage as it crashes into your shoulder, and then sticking its hand for a large kind of smash uh, towards your face, Kanan, is another slam attack. This is a disadvantage at a 10. Kind of hit into its own friend before it comes through, and you're able just to pull your head back before it's able to land. It's the end of its turn. Now come to this one who is enraged. It's kind of moving a little bit more uh, ferociously, right? It's kind of moving more haphazardly. Uh, and it is uh, going to attempt to shove you uh, into the ground, Kanan. So I need you to make an opposing athletics or acrobatics check. Mm. All right. All right, so looks to be a failure here upon their part. So you're able to maintain your balance by putting yourself back into the perch of those metallic stone pillars that brace against the staircase as it descends. And it just kind of comes in and tries to check you, right, with one of its attack actions, try to knock you back into the staircase. And then in rage, it beats itself and comes in for one more slam attack towards you as it crashes and says, <laughs> this comes towards the center point of your chest and it's able to crash into the center point of your chest, dealing seven points of bludgeoning damage to you as it comes through. That's the end of its turn. Now we come to you, Kanan. Uh, I believe the restraint is no longer there from the energy barrage. Correct. <clears throat> All right. Um, this gentleman seems to be in foul spirits we should go ahead and put him out of his misery uh, so he's going to attack him with the bane of barry thune okay and across uh 24 is going to hit and you're able to deal 15 points of slashing and force damage as you crash through you see the uh chaos slice invigorated with your energy imbued around it what color is it oh it is dark and shadowy dark and shadowy you can only shadow blade right yeah okay very so you cut very similar as you cut through, you can see them spliced apart. They're still enraged and they're still alive. Things are proven quite resilient. We shall do that again. Uh, I'm getting flank currently, right? Uh, you do not have a flank bonus. Uh, uh, oh, that's right, because there's one between us, yeah. That's a bad guy in between us, not a friend. <laughs> that's a bad guy. You're <laughs> supposed to be my friend. I'm not your friend. <laughs> Uh, 17, 18 will hit. Uh, you're able to come through halfway between the creature and split it into multiple fragments as it sloshes and falls apart down towards the ground. And because we haven't played in a while, just be mindful of your Dark One's blessing. Yep, three temp HP. Put that in there. Um, and because of Chaos Slice, uh, I get a bonus action attack. That's right. Because uh, I killed something, so I'm going to make another one on this gentleman. So you amplified it, you're able to get the bonus action swinging through it. I love also how you you're, you rotated your token yeah. for it. And 22 is going to hit you do 14 points of slashing and force damage as you whirl the Bane of Barry Thune invigorated with your chaos through another target cutting into its shoulder blade. And then I'm going to take a step if I can. Oh, I'm on the ruler. Hold yeah, on. you're on the drag ruler. Uh, <clears throat> Take a step there, over the okay. dead body, try to free up some space. Uh, and then that's going to end his turn. All right, ending turn. Uh, we now come to uh, this one over here. Move that person out of the way. This uh, one has just been recently attacked in terms uh, by two potential targets it sees. So it's going to divide its attacks up. It's kind of coming with either slam attack, one to the right and one to the left. It's not showcasing any sort of enraging at this moment. Uh, it is going to land a critical against you, uh, Domlin. Um, uh, just, be, I... just be mindful because we're on the new world. I, I, had, I did not put the critical thing for the fireworks and stuff. So 
Um, so you won't you won't be seeing that right so he um, can sneak them in on us now no 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 <laughs> i just I, I i forgot i just rolled the critical and i was like oh there's a fireworks that was one of the things i forgot there's a lot of things i had to do and that was definitely at the low of the total we're on the same page kane and sneaking them in all right so it's the just critical don like it's the pet. Uh, as the critical hit comes through uh this is bludgeoning damage and you do have your hill rune up yep let's see and I think that's, it doesn't matter if it's uh, magical or not. It's all bludgeoning, correct? Nope. Yeah, it's all bludgeoning. Okay. Slash so you're going to you're gonna have 33 down to 16 points of damage as you come through the invigoration of hill giants being, kind of coming through into your armament and sort of rushes against as it swings. And then the secondary slam attack of this creature is going to come towards you, Jax. And a 26 is going to hit into you. <clears throat> and you take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. As a wallops grabbing you by the by the checker your cloak and smashes you back into the wall. These are super naturally strong creatures. Three of them are still up. A number of you are injured and feeling it. We now come to the next round, round two. Pip, you're up. Everything's All right. fine. All right, Jax. Um... Do you want me to wait till you're down to polymorph you into something cool? Don't worry. Don't worry about me. You do what you would do. Okay. Okay. So, just thought I'd get that there. So, what I'm going to do is first take a little step forward just so I can see kind of what's happening. Wait, no, then I'll be in his range. So, no, I'm not going to step forward. So I am going to try to use a hypnotic pattern on our little gas mask -y friend over here. Okay. Well, actually, first I'm gonna make it feel bad about itself. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna do unselling words three off of the saving throw. Yeah, and now I'm going to try to make it not a threat for a while. All right, so you throw out the hypnotic pattern, and as a reaction, you are going to be counterspelled. So you throw out your hypnotic pattern. As it begins to invigorate, you can see them sending out a brush of energy from their hands, casting the verbal somatic component and emanating it outwards towards you. It brushes your hypnotic pattern and is ending that spell. He's just... Briefly going to mention that, and then kind of back up so he doesn't get hit by another blast. Okay. And I guess I'll end my turn for now. All right, in turn, we now come uh, to the mage's turn. It steps forward just five feet, just get a little bit closer. It vocalizes out in a very small, brief line. You will die here unless you lay down your weapons and your arms. They begin to cackle lightning from their hands, invigorating through as they look towards you, Caden. Lance is up. Okay. <clears throat> well. Yeah, he can't really see anything else, so I feel like in his best Sean Connery, he would explain to this gentleman that he is a loser, and he would take a shot at him. For a natural 20. Woo! Let's go. All right, so the reaction, the reaction is taken up uh, for the held uh, spell here. So it comes through with the natural 20, takes 30 points of bludgeoning thunder damage. So it crashes in the center point of your chest. Uh, before you can interact, uh, there is going to be casting of a spell. This is a chain lighting. And I am going to energy resist. I'm going to make a saving throw still, so you're going to have to half potentially here. 
We'll see. Ooh. I'm absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. Shit. Damn. Dude, these rolls have turned off great for us tonight, guys. Just saying. Yeah, I already yeah. knew. That's why I used a reaction. I'm like, nope. I'm just, I'm All right, so uh, 43 points of lightning damage uh, here. So we're going to go ahead and half. With the energy resistance, you're going to go to negative 21 on that. And then these creatures, after taking lightning damage, are going to take all of that damage and heal themselves. So each one of them is struck by the same bolt of lightning. The chain lightning as it crashes into you, Kane, and you're the primary target. It then splinters from you and your armor as it does. It snaps into the other three constructs, healing them near to fully, completely. As the see the wounds invigorated are healing at rapid pace from different mechanical things inside of themselves. It's very much an intentional casting to invigorate those that are already dealing so much damage to you all. They hold themselves in position as it was the reaction to do this because uh, they had a held. It's still uh, Lance's turn and the reaction uh, has been already been taken here. So what is Lance yep. doing? He's going to take his second attack. Okay, the second attack is Oof. going to be a 10, and unfortunately that's not going to land. You can see them kind of duck underneath it now, dodging in terms of the angle. Right, Lance is kind of using that border cover scenario with the top end of the door frame, right? And so it's getting a bead. Uh-oh. What? We're lagging out. Oh no, I'm lagging out. Hold on. I think I think you're better. Maybe. Am I am I back now? I Seems got you. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Been been lagging out. No, it was me. Um, I, it was on. Uh, it was on OBS. I saw. Yeah. It. All right. He uh, he's gonna step out of line of sight now. Okay. And that's gonna end his turn. All right. Donlin. Um, I think after seeing all of the lightning come, Donlin's going to be pissed that these things are still in his way, and two of his friends are getting hit by lightning bolts. Um, I can use this ice wall thing more than once, right? That is correct. It is a legendary item. It can be used multiple times. All right, then I feel like Donlin would literally, out of frustration with the lightning bolts, slam the axe into the ground and create a uh, an ice wall to kind of block the the doorway. Oh, like over over here? Yeah, like essentially suited out this way, out of this doorway. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this target and this target and Kanan would be affected by that ice wall. They would have to make their strength saves. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay, let's get hit by lightning bolts. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so this is oh, a, t- a twenty, boy. a twenty foot long and a five foot uh, wall lo- long vice. So it's it's like literally twenty to the ceiling height and five because it can't go up to twenty, right? So it is a massive wall of ice. It is incredibly thick, uh, and I've tried to be as uh, equal to the value of this by using this little artwork here. Um, and so if there are targets that are nearby it when it is uh, thrown up, uh, basically those uh, targets that are within uh, kind of some range of the edging of that of that wall, right? That's where we're kind of going for a strength save. Um, you know, I'm going to say because of the angle, I won't say Kanan's affected by it because you did call it at an angle. And I think, Kanan, you're a little bit further than where I would draw that wall. So we'll just have the strength save for the two creatures. And the DC is a 19. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Uh, that's a fail. And that is a fail. So both those targets are now prone. All right. Um, bonus action. All right. I'm going to second wind. Okay, recover. That's AOE, right? Flat two. AOE heal. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, AOE. AOE. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we are going to action surge since the one. It's their problem. Probably one of the cooler side effects in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And yeah, we're going to swing a couple times. So getting the additional action after you use your previous action, throw up this ice wall using the axe you throw, <laughs> see it invigorate, almost like a funnel of ice explodes out of the actual blade of the axe and then begins to grow in like spikes and then builds upon itself. It bumps those two creatures and makes them kind of go forward. Uh, it doesn't look like the icon is showing up on the artwork, but they are prone. Uh, so just so you know, so you should have advantage on this one. Okay. So we're going to take, uh, because you're still small, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll take we'll take the two. Uh, so that is a 19 minus 5, which is a 14. Uh, and a 14 is going to hit, so you do 19 points of slashing damage. I don't think you can miss unless you get a natural one. So. I was going to say, he can't miss with it without a natural one. Holy shit. Yeah, 26 is going to hit you do 21 <laughs> points of damage. I mean, you, both, you have two party members with the literal legendary, you know, artifact level weapons right now. <laughs> okay, see the creature taking the hits, but again, it's been healed by the lightning, and so it would otherwise be down. It's still invigorated, it's still alive. That's fine. No more lightning for it. There's an ice wall in the way. Fuck this thing. All right, this one is not. It's going to turn around. It sees you, Jax. You're looking worse for wear. You can see it kind of... Grabs and goes in for a natural twenty. Can I see Jax? Like he, I don't see his token on the thing, but would I be able to see him? Uh, technically. He, yeah. So the wall. Let's see if we can pull the walls back a little bit. You should be able to look around it. So let me go ahead. I'll just snap the walls back a little bit here, and it should reveal. Them. Okay. Then I am going to use a reaction, uh, runic shield, to force him to reroll that hit. Okay, so it is hit with attack roll. You can use your reaction to force the attacker to re-roll the d20 and use the new roll. Let's go ahead and do another attack roll to represent that. Uh, that re-roll is going to be a miss. Uh, and so oh, as you can see, oh, the slam coming oh, through your huge. face. Jack, as you're just like looking, it's going to crush your head into the wall. It's going to smash your skull in. Just, a, just an immediate punch. A runic shield just comes invigorated with giant runes in front of you and Don, as you're holding your hand out towards and the fist just hits into the shield and the shield brushes into your face and is like holding it too for just like a little bit and then pulls back but then has another attack and is going to come uh, for another punch towards your left hand side and that is going to be a 22 uh, which is going to Uncanny dodge. And you're going to try to uncanny dodge halving the damage uh, and good enough for you here, that's successful, to half eight oh, down to four, God. which would otherwise knock you unconscious. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hey, that's how one you take it. hit point one hit left. Point. You take I it saved in. your life. I just want one you to know that. Need. Yeah, I think you, you have did. to stop making fun of Donlin for at least a week. I, I think I do. <laughs> I think I do. All right. Oh so my God. Into the reaction to get the uncanny, and that is going to be the end of the creature's turn. He's just wild. Oh, it's not berserk or anything, but it's they're frustrated at this point not to take you out. But now we're going to come to your turn immediately. All right, so taking health potions for yourself—it's a bonus action. Is that an? It's a. So theoretically, could I do? Have, theoretically, if you have fast hands, technically you can. Right. I can take two or three with that. If yeah, I were so, to use my action to do it as well. Yeah. So if we do the, uh, well, you can't use. Uh, you can't use your action, um, right? You can't use your action to throw throw a pot down. So you can only do a bonus action for yourself. You can't interchange, right? Okay. So, okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my fast hands and my bonus action first. Yeah. So I believe. Let me see. I put a rule in here. Uh, where is that? Rules. This is where fast hands gets confusing a little bit for me. I put uh, I put a rule in for the action economy of use an object. Yeah, so potions use the action economy of use an object. So one action use on mm -hmm. others and one bonus action use on self, no concentration. And so if we go to fast hands, uh, and this is why I did it this way. Um, if we go look at fast hands here on uh, your character sheets. You can use an action granted by your cunning action, which would be my bonus action. So yep. essentially it does the same thing. Yep. Or take so the use take an one. object or take the use an object action. Right. So so the idea here is that you could potentially give a you can give a, uh, uh, a potion right to someone else. 
but if you're going to take a potion for yourself, you can't take two. Whereas if you were throwing a grenade, you could use your action to throw a grenade, then your bonus action to use a grenade. So the reason why I did okay. the ruling like this is that you couldn't use your fast hands to chug two pots on one single bonus action. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take one uh, potion of, of greater healing. Okay. Now, do I need to target myself for this first? Uh, yeah. yeah. I've actually never taken one in the in the game, so. Wow, okay. Well, you know, there's the first time for everything. <laughs> All right, chugging it down a greater, it's gonna get you back 25. That's huge. All right, that was my bonus action. Yep. Or my, that was my, yeah, it doesn't matter. That was my bonus action, so that's, mm -hmm. that's all that counts for. And then uh, as my action, I will go ahead and take the dodge action. Oh, okay. Throwing up the dodge, okay. Well, I mean, I'm still not, like, great, so these guys start fucking teaming up on me here. Yeah. The two in front of you are thrown, by the way. Yeah, let me see if I can get. Uh, let me do a different. Oh, condition. are they the, yeah. the two? Yeah, they got oh, knocked down by the wall. Oh, uh, I, I think it's just a problem with the artwork. It's like not wanting to reveal it on the status. Are, button, so, can I can I rethink that then instead of taking the dodge, or is that too late? Because uh, I already said it. No, uh, I'll can, go either you, way. Yeah, no, it's you. fine. You can do it. That's fine. Let me go okay, ahead and so get I'm gonna a use tint on them real fast here. So I. Uh, if I remember correctly, last time I hit them with my regular dagger and I noticed it didn't do as much damage as it should have. That's correct. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use my action to summon my pack weapon as a da in dagger form. Okay. And it should it shouldn't it just essentially I'm not summoning any magical weapon or anything, just summoning a dagger and my my pack weapon, which should then make it a magical weapon correct if i'm uh, understanding yeah. this correctly mm -hmm. and Counts then magical purpose of overcoming resistance right so at at that point then uh that's my bonus action my action i will end my turn okay all right this one is prone uh it is going to use half of its movement speed to get up and that's so funny i literally just put a tint to them but uh you know <laughs> <laughs> Live and let live. They're going to pick themselves up here as they kind of grab two. Uh, they're going to look towards you, Kanan, and they're going to come in for two slam attacks. The first attack is a 22, which is going to hit you. Uh, that is going to deal a total of 12 points of bludgeoning damage as it comes through and smashes into you. You begin to be wary, sidestep, and moving side to side. Then it's going to come in for a slam attack and grab both of the arms, just going to club down on you. It's going to be a 15, which misses. So it's your time to time. You can see you're waiting. Look at two clubs come through and you're able to get out of the way of it. And that just clears the path. And it's its turn. Kanan, you're up. I'm beginning to detest these things rather vigorously. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, as a bonus action, I'm going to chug a potion. Okay, you're going to recover 23. Nice. Then as my action... Yeah, we're just going to go back to the main of Barathun. Okay, that's going to be Oof. a natural one. As you come swing through, you're, you're just chug the potion, you... Take the vi, slam it down to the grab, grab Bane Bear through, you come in for a swing. The creature is already timed. That's gonna you're gonna attack it, so it just kind of pulls itself back, and even though it's slow, you get wild and just swing the blade through, and unfortunately you do not land. Um I think I'm not the bane, correct me if I'm wrong, the bane of berry thune is supposed to impart proficiency. Uh, it should be doing proficiency, is it not? No. Nah. Okay. You should also have a plus 12. Yeah, there's also the plus one from Chaos Slice that I don't think is rolling. I mean, that was a one, so it doesn't matter, but I just happened to notice because I looked at it. Uh, attack roll bonus four. 
So it should be 4 plus 6 plus prof, prof right? Yes. Okay. All right, it should be should be good to go. Uh, I don't think you had any attacks that missed like that. I think you've only had natural ones. Right? Let's see. Yeah, I think everything hit before that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I just happened. I was like, that seems low even for a one. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, that one missed. Uh, he's gonna attack again. Okay. Let's see if it good works. Through. Yeah. So yeah, four plus six plus three. Okay. So sixteen is gonna hit. You do 23 points of slashing and force damage. Technically, that's a 17 because you are flanking with Jax currently. Uh, okay, yeah, and then that will end his turn. Ending turn. This one is prone. Uh, it's going to take half its movement speed to pick itself up. So, again, ending the uh, tint. But hey, it's nice to have it when it lasted. It's going to look towards you, Donlet, and come in for two slam attacks towards you. The first attack is a 24, which is going to hit. You're able to resist the damage down to 9. And then it's going to take its second slam attack, which is a 14, club into the wall nearby. Just going to bam right in with its... So it kind of grabs the fist, holding it from left to right. Uh, I am going to roll a dice here. I'm going to do it in secret. Okay, it is not enraged. That's the end of its turn. All right, Pippi, up next. Question: Does ice walls block line of sight? Um, that so this ice wall is five foot thick. Uh, so if we're uh, if you're gonna say you can look through it, uh, I'm gonna say you can probably get a pinpoint of a target range with inside. So if there's a spell that says you need to be visible to a target or something, and it's not an, not a spell that would otherwise interact with the physical sense, I think you can get it through. Um, but if it's gonna be more along the lines of like you know you have to be you know, the, whatever you're, you're looking at the target, you need to know what kind of shirt they're wearing or, or whatever it is. I don't think you can get discernible features through an ice wall like that, but you can technically see through to a point. Yeah, use hypnotic pattern through it. Could you use hypnotic pattern through it? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. if you're you're just aiming for a point on the other side of the wall, yeah. Too important. All right, so I'm gonna use hypnotic pattern on this dude again. Hopefully, okay. make him waste another. Hopefully, maybe we'll see. Right, yep, place it. There we go. The creature is going to fail at saving throw. It has no reaction counter spell because it used it for the hold uh, spell previously. You can see, kind of faltering to the side, kind of sidestepping from left to right. And my next question is the ring of spell storing. Does that count as a spell? What do you mean? Does it count as a spell? Like when for the like, case of like holding something or using it? Well, for instance, like because it's holding a healing word. So if I wanted to, I don't think I'm going to do it this round. But if I wanted to heal one of them, but I just cast like hypnotic pattern. Typically, I can't do both. Because it's uh, a bonus so the typically. yeah. So um, I believe. The spell uses slot level, spell save DC, spell attack bonus, and spell cast ability of the original caster, but it is otherwise treated as if you cast the spell. Uh, da, 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 da. Honestly, it doesn't say. Yeah, that's why I was confused. Usually, it. usually it's an action because you're using an object, but... I mean, it I act, it acts like you're casting the spell, so you're going to take the action economy of the spell, not of the ring. Okay, so it's a so bonus I, action to use the healing word. But it would still count as a spell, so I shouldn't. I can't use both, then, right? Uh, yeah, so you can't use level both leveled spells. That's right. Okay, so in that case, I'm just going to talk some shit to this dude. Normal shit. Just some normal shit. Yeah, yeah for saying that, I thought you were going to say I was gonna, I'm going to talk dirty to this guy. So the I mean, you know. <laughs> so hypnotic pattern is an action to, to cast. So your oh, action my bad. is you're right, to, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't know why I was thinking bonus and not. So never mind. Bonus mockery, baby. Yeah, baby. 
I mean, it could be a class feature. I don't know. Look at Rakan trying to capitalize. This hypnotic <laughs> pad with the fucking, fucking badass mage over there. He's like, let me get a little, let me get a little bonus mark. <laughs> Oh, I need to put that back. I'll just do this. Careful, careful. It's glass. Sweet Jesus. It's glass. <laughs> That's never good. <laughs> and then I'm going to back up just a case. And end my turn. All right, ending turn. Uh, this is hypnotic pattern, which means it doesn't get a save or anything like that unless it is dealt damage. So it's going to continue to maintain that stupor um unless someone uses an action or anything like that to try to wake it up and in turn lands the next all right well <clears throat> he's gonna go until he sees something take a shot all right, that is going to be uh, 12, technically, and that will hit. It deals 23 points of bludgeoning and thunder damage. Now, technically, he would normally get a horde breaker, but I don't actually see anything else. Should he have vision of the one next to it? Or either of the He can't see either of those. Uh, I think you could peek around the corner and get it. Because uh, the way wall, the way the walls are, is super tight here. I'll move them to half dial, and that should reveal. Yeah, I got tokens. So then we will. Horde breaker. Actually, wait. Let me make sure I did this right. Do you two bird first, or do you horde breaker first? Because the horde breaker doesn't have to bird. hit, right? So two, two bird. First. You two yeah. bird first. Yeah. Because a corn here, if I'm not mistaken, is a whole nother noise. Right. And then, Man, was that two nat 20s for him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. And then Let's horn go. breaker back to this guy. Yep. Yeah, that's 20. And that was his first attack. So then second attack. Damn, Lance. Oh, so a max of five, because he can't Horde the second one. So the it's second, only a max, yeah. it's a max of well, five. That's where it's at, right? Well, no, because a Horde Breaker is a separate attack. It's not like on two an attack. So he would be able to get the two sling twice. Because of, or okay, yeah, yeah, it's because it says once, in each, yeah. once on each of your turns, when you make a meat weapon attack. You may then make another attack with the same weapon. You can make so it'd be like throwing the sling it twice. So that should still trigger two sling two, yeah. Once, sling. I'm once, not mistaken. once on each of your turns when you make weapon attack. So you couldn't horde breaker. You can only horde breaker Twice. once, right? Yeah, but the horde breaker would give you a two bird sling because it's another attack. Yeah, he's saying you basically so be like have three extra two attack. bird slings because so, two attacks. Yeah, yeah, so three instead, attacks. So it's one horde breaker. One horde breaker and three two bird slings to make it six yeah. total potential. Yes. Yeah. Which I think I just skipped one of those. Uh, no, because you just you just horde break. So you went you went one attack. You got the eleven. Then you did the natural twenty for two birds. Then you went for a horde breaker. Okay, right. so I just need to now do another two birds. And now you need to do another two birds. Yeah, which would be to this guy again. Probably misses. Uh, that is going to miss. Except for yeah, you have the flank. Okay. So that'll hit. Do 19 points. All right. And then, so that was his first attack, technically. Now, this would be the second attack of his action economy. Yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take, I'm going to have to get a notepad out because I got to figure this out in my head. I'm going to have to get a little. Because yeah, he attacked out. two okay. bird. So one. Then, one attack equals one two birds. Yeah. Then that's that's and it. That's breaker. done. Then you do one horde breaker equals also one gets a two birds. Two birds. <laughs> and then that's it for that's it for the first. 
for the first attack, and then That's he gets the another first. attack. And then you get the extra attack. could also trigger a two birds. One attack gets. equals one two birds. But he can't horde break again. So, but he no, can't horde break again. So that's that's one, really two, five, three, four, five, six. It's six. It's six, six. attacks. Yeah. yeah, it's six. Yeah. Okay. So f- and it's four, usually four for the first four, four for the first attack, and then two for the second attack. Two for the second attack. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. horde breakers two additional hits. Yeah. Or two Unless additional you well, if he hits with the slim, if you miss, yeah. then he can yeah, do four yeah. on the second attack. But so yeah. you've done you've done yeah. five attacks. This eight was technically your first attack of your second area to extra attack. Now you can do a two birds because you've hit with this based on the flank, which allows you to, to get the yes. six off. Yes. Yes. We're all just shaking your head like we understand it. I'm just but like, really, sure we don't no. fucking understand it. <laughs> or is I this mean, fucking like incredibly it. broken. Yeah, sense. usually he takes all of his attacks in a row and then he does the horde breaker as a special after, kind of as yeah. if he took an action surge, yeah. is how he treats it. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So, okay. So we, we hit with the fit. We're going to hit with the, uh, the 14 there on the flank. That's going to do 21 points of bludgeoning and thunder damage. Just racking them up here as you bounce back and forth between the cluster of enemies and be mindful. They have to be within like five. They have to, to be ten. within they have five to be super feet. close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you bounce between the two of them here, uh, as they explode, uh, one of which goes back into the ice wall and kind of cracks back into it. The other one seems to be pretty injured, but again, they were reinvigorated without lightning. And so they're staying tall. The two of them here. Yep. Um, and that's gonna end this. He's gonna move back down here. Okay. And that'll end his turn. All right, uh, Dom. Then you're gonna be up next, and then I'll just adjust the walls as needed here. So I might keep him a little bit off the grid. Maybe that'll help. All right. We are going to do what Dom does best, and we are going to swing at this poor guy in front of me. Poor guy. It's just been waylaying at all of you, man. I mean, he's waylaying on everyone else. He hasn't really hurt me that much. I actually think I'm up health since I walked into this fight. <laughs> all right, deals 12 points of slashing damage as you come through. Uh, and then, of course, that is going to hit, like I said, unless you get a natural one on one of the die, does 19 points. You come over once and twice, ripping apart into the rejuvenated construct here. It takes the blows, but still alive. Um, I... I got it, don't worry. I'm going to look at this one in the back. Hey, come here! And I'm going to use Tonic. This creature has a really horrible wisdom save, but it has succeeded with a 16. Jesus Christ, of course it did. Um, all right, well, that's the end of my turn. Let's run. Mm-hmm. Huh? What was that, man? <laughs> Just, like, looking around. Right? Can you hear me down here? <laughs> what? So dumb. so dumb he didn't realize you were taunting him. Yeah. <laughs> He's so dumb he didn't so realize. Dumb he didn't realize it. All right, this one now goes into a rage. Uh, now goes berserk. It does it look towards Fuck you, Dax, me. completely locked on upon you. First attack at disadvantage is a 20. That'll hit you. Uh, yep. I'll take 12. Yes, you will. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yes, you will. Second attack is an 11, which again, disadvantage is able to strike into the upper wall segment as you dodge underneath it and you live to tell the tale. Gamble. I was, attacks. I was playing, I was playing the odds there to get an mm-hmm. uncanny dodge on the second one, just in case I should have taken yeah. it on the first. Um, I know. all right. So I have my, so, so my, the packed weapon does not add any bonuses to the weapon, so theoretically, I'm rolling a a regular dagger, but magical. Yeah. So you, uh, if even if we're playing with like BG three or whatever rules that says like you add charisma or whatever into the attack, um, you actually have the same modifier with your deck. So you yeah. Actually, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a magic. I want to make deck. sure I was rolling the right thing. So I'm going to target the one that's uh, engaged with Deuce now with my dagger. My okay. my hack weapon dagger, which should also, if I hit, trigger sneak attack. A- am I correct to trigger sneak attack? Yep. Uh, 
All right, you deal 24 total points of damage. You're able to take into the neck and the head, almost lobbing some of it off here. You kind of go into the metallic framework inside of its neck region towards the head. Kind of takes the blow and kind of falls, uh, falters to the side, to the right side as it crashes into the wall. All right, I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage and fucking run behind Doosums. <laughs> I'm sorry, behind, behind Donlin. <laughs> I'll, I'll end my turn there. All right. Ending turn. Kane and you're oh, next. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael. It, it moved one square too far. I was trying to go right behind him. I, I lagged a little okay. bit. Okay. You should be able to move. I have put a yeah. setting in there. It does lock your movement because obviously we're in combat and there's like a lock behind it. But I actually put something in there that allows you to move after your turn. Uh, basically move in the subsequent turn in case you make a mistake. Yeah, I left, I left a ghost token there, but I, I just wanted you to know I'm right behind uh, Dolman for that, so that's awesome. I know. Happens all the time. You're good. <laughs> all right, thanks. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, we will continue to swing at this one. All right, continue to swing. It's asking me to use Bardic. I don't have Bardic. That's interesting. I oh, gave it I? to you. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. The pop-up is different than the one before, I think, because I had an existing Bardic. Yeah, I was confused. Yeah. This, yeah, this, is the, yeah. this is the one that is now fixed. It's the automated one mm. without the nesting stuff. 18 is going to hit. You do 18 points of slashing and force damage. We'll do it again, hopefully. Okay. 25 is going to hit. You do 15 points of slashing and force damage. Creature is still alive in rage. It takes both the blows. It's got thrashing moving itself. I don't like this! I don't blame you. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to drink another potion. Okay. Oh, another 23, okay? Um, and that is going to end his turn. Okay, ending turn. Uh, Pip, we now come to you. You're concentrating on the hypnotic pattern. I'm going to come up here. Mm-hmm. Finally see what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Fun fact, first time I've seen. So first I'm going to do... Let me... Healing word. Is Jax recover nine? Not much. Yeah, that's yeah, a full yeah. healing word, my friend. <laughs> that's max. That's max Literally healing. Max. Yeah, but for a healing, you know, I'm a bard. I do what I can, right? And then I'm actually going to do something I normally don't do, and I'm just going to take a swipe at this dude. Oh my god! <laughs> yep. <I'm, laughs> as you grab your ring, you're trying to figure it out. You're in. You see the enraged creature. You point the ring in the direction, cast the healing oh word towards God. your friend, and the enraged creature slowly turns towards you. You grab the short sword, you come in for a stab. The creature just knocks it out of the way. You hold your short sword, staring in face of the enraged, large, towering creature in front of you. I'm just gonna say, damn it! I had that one cool shot with the dragon sword, and that's all I've done. And that's my turn. Just depressed. Make turn. Him knock pattern is still in effect. Lance is up next. I'm back up here. <clears throat> There's only one left. Uh, yeah, we're going to actually go ahead and move him over here. I know he'll probably okay. take an opportunity attack. That's fine. Uh, I won't give you the opportunity attack if you reduce five feet of movement. Your choice. So take the opportunity, uh, or you can do five. How far was that? He's got the full amount, so he goes twenty-five as a dwarf. So if you go there, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and he's gonna take an attack on this guy. Okay. All right, eighteen is going to hit. Deals twenty-three total points of bludgeoning and thunder damage, and that is going to be the end of that creature as it takes the blast. You see it reeling towards your friend Pip. And the sling kind of whips out, comes into the chest, explodes a large cavity inside of them. Begins to cascade down, is dead. Yep. Um, <clears throat> that'll end his turn. 
All right, ending turn. Uh, we now come into part of the combat here, which I'm gonna find super, super funny. I can't wait to figure it out. Um, Deuce, if you actually read in your ax, uh, there is no actual way to remove these ice walls. To unsummon the walls. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I I was wondering uh, very that curious that you're gonna solve this. All right, so Donald's gonna walk up. He's gonna look at the uh, the ice wall. He's just gonna swing his ax <laughs> Start chucking at it, doing some damage. All right, all yeah. I need you, all I need you to do uh, is to uh, roll weapon damage here, uh, so you can target one of the unconscious creatures if you wish to just get the damage out, because uh, it's going to be a guaranteed hit. It's just kind of seeing how much damage you can do the ice wall this time. <laughs> you missed the ice wall. <laughs> all right, so right point slashing damage still. dealt to the ice wall. The ice wall is still up as you come through with a large chunk ripped off of it. Again. All the time. Come in with Maybe. a large swing. It might be lagging. Uh, hmm. I have you right now. It's yeah, 64. Yeah, you've rolled once so far. We'll see. We'll see if it updates. It might tell you you're lagging. I did. Uh, I did increase the time that the latency would adjust. It was going off every like ten seconds. Um, it's, it's every forty seconds. It's because it untargeted the creature because it's dead. Oh, it's dead. That's right. Nat, crit, oh, that's right. Crit, no. no. Double the uh, dice. Double the dice. 31. All right. So 31 plus 16. That's actually going to be enough to conquer this ice wall. So the ice wall that you are able to create is now smashed into smithereens as you're able to break apart what you had created. And, well, the axe is not happy. You see there's a little sad face out of frost on the blade as it looks towards you and a tear falls from <laughs> one of the eyes. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll, you'll get to make another one soon. No, I'm just going to walk behind my you. happy ass up the hallway with my axe like, on my Holy shoulder. Shit. Donlin's on the warpath, guys. <laughs> <laughs> don't attack uh, it. Don't Everyone's attack. near it, so hit it at once. <laughs> All right, uh, Jax, uh, you were up. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to, oh, man, do I burn another one? I'm going to take a, uh, regular, oh, I target myself first, take a regular, uh, bonus action to take a regular healing potion. Okay. Feeling a little better now, a little better. And then I'm going to use my movement. So that's 15. I kind of learned my lesson a little bit from last time, so I'm going to uh, actually, I should be able to see around that corner. So I'm going to stay here around this corner, yep. and what I'm going to do is uh, ready my Eldritch Blast for the uh, dude at the end there, the mage or whatever he is. I don't know if I can tell he's a mage. Um for either can it be two can it be two things that yeah. trigger it or does it have to be one? Yeah, so uh I believe with the held spell, with the held action as well, is that you get one attack if it specifies multiple that you can't necessarily go all off on a, I, I mean two two yeah. things that could trigger it, I guess, that could trip the attack to happen. Like for instance, what oh, I was looking for is Oh, so you're if, saying so yes, yeah, so you, you can only get one beam, right? But you're saying there are two conditions right. that you want to get the beam off. Like what so Correct. what would be is it like first if and then? If we or attack it, him, if we attack him or if he attacks us. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so so I'll I'll hold an Eldritch Blast for that if we attack him or if he attacks us. Okay. Cool. And then I'll end my turn. Alright, Kanan. If shit pops up. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, basically. Say. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we're going this way now. If shit goes bad. Yeah, I don't know if I want to charge in front of Donla. I'm just going to come up here. We're going to get ready to, like, you know, breach and clear. <laughs> breach and clear. <laughs> breach and clear. You know, and as a bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and chug one of my smaller potions. We're, just, we're going to chug them all. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Uh, and then that's going to end this turn. All right. That's a hell of a roll okay. right there on potions. For me, I'm going to chug my potion too. Do I have potions? I should. We specifically didn't give Pip any potions. 
potions. Yeah, we gave yeah, them I no we, potions. They have yeah. nothing. Nothing at all. 20. And, oh, nice. Well, that's a big roll. Yeah, you know. That's max roll. He can use a potion, he just can't hit, okay? <laughs> I mean, you've got the hypnotic pattern that may have saved I us between drink. that and the ice wall. <laughs> yeah, um, with that, again, he's just going to get kind of like right here. He's just gonna move a little bit, and once again, stress. The moment you touch him, shit's gonna pop off. And actually, I want to be able to see him, so I need to. Would this count as being partially covered right here? I want to. I don't know how close I can get with the. Or you know what? What am I doing? There's a freaking door here. Can I just open the door? The door has oh, a God. padlock. It is a cell door. Uh, so this oh. is a cell door. Uh, I did. Uh, you kind of grab onto the padlock and stuff, and you're kind of moving, and you. Uh, you do hear that there is uh, kind of like motion and stuff from some of the doors, suggesting there might be people in there. It's like fucking golems came from this direction. There's a bad mage down there. Let's just open the door. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> I was going to say there's might be something in these doors, and that's it right now. Well, actually, just because I know Dong's going to be the first to go in, most likely, I'm going to... <laughs> Use my last bardic inspiration on you, so use it well. And in my turn. Okay, let's go. Still incapacitated. No one has woken them up. They're still on the stupid. Lance is up. Um, just gonna close gap a little bit here. And ready and attack <laughs> for when this gentleman is attacked. I need to see everyone just kind of surrounding him. This, just, this is funny shit because everybody's waiting for like Goblin to get up there this time. <laughs> he just wakes up. <laughs> this poor man is about to wake up to some shit. All right. I play Pedro. Um, so, bonus action. I'm going to drink a potion before I wake this gentleman. Okay. Yeah. Would Don and drink a potion? Yeah, Don. He's just kind of like nonchalantly like walking up to this dude. <laughs> he gives zero fucks. Uh, so, we're going to walk up to this gentleman. Go oh, up boy. Yeah. You know Here it comes. Here it comes. Swing. Let's embark. Can I use both bardics at the same time? Is that it? I don't believe so. <laughs> it prompted me twice? That's why I was like really confused. I think I have well, I don't mind's weird. Like if you don't get it, you get to use it again. Yeah, the unfailing. Well, I had the plus six yeah. from earlier. From the helmet, yeah. Use. That's why I was... Yeah. I'll, I'll use yeah. the plus six, because that's fine. Let's keep that in mind, too. I keep forgetting that if we actually don't... Yeah, I'm looking at the... Uh, it. Look at your, your rolls that came through here. It's kind of weird. Yeah, that's why I... It, it looks like it used both I think you. I think both you buffs are gone. I think it looks like you lagged, and so it inputted it twice. So your first attack went through, and it had a d6 and a d8, like it grabbed both of them. Yeah, it only shows an 18 in the chat card for me. That's why I'm... But both buffs are gone. Yeah, because it got confused, which, I mean, technically, you can only have one bark inspiration at a time, and you always take the highest one. So... Okay. I don't think... I don't think... Because you have the d6 still from the crown, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can have you I don't think you can be barically inspired twice, but because it's an item, we can make a ruling that it's okay. I think it's going to mess up though because the way that it works is go by, it goes by the name and so it triggers it by the name and so I think what happened mm -hmm. was they wanted to run when you said yes or to the one it wanted to put the other one in too. So are you going to use the D8 or the D6? Is the question. Um I'll use the D6. That's fine. Okay. 
So the d6 was a value of four. You rolled two on the die. Yeah, so it should be an 18. Uh, that's correct. 18. Uh, is not going to hit. Oh, shit. That's unforged. You still oh, have... You still have the D8, because you used the D6. So let's put that on. Well, if you missed, at least it didn't wake up. That's true. Okay, so now we're going to get a 17. So the question here is, do you want to use the, the D8? D8? Okay, go ahead and roll. Yeah. All right, so 21, that is going to hit. You're going to do 11 points of damage to them, and that is going to wake them up. So we break the concentration of the knock pattern. Uh, I'm also going to fire on that. So four, okay. Uh, creature will succeed with a 17 against your DC of 14. It's going to half the damage and also has fire resistance. It only takes two points. Oh, man. Well, that's right. Well, Does that's that fine because we have like six held attacks against the him. First held is gonna be, <laughs> the first held is going to be Jax. So, Jax, you can fire off one of your elders. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a 13, which is not going to land. And then now we're going to come to Lance, and Lance gets one attack from the yep. slang, right? Yep. yep. Thank you, Lance. Oh man, I really wish I fixed it. I tried to fix it, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to fix the shield lag. It literally won't fix itself. Oh my god. Alright, uh, it is going to try to pop a shield off here, but the 25 is still going to hit. Deals 23 points of bludgeoning and thunder, so they hold their hands up and kind of form a bubble around them, and it kind of explodes uh, around right as they do that. Uh, and then you're going to go in for a trip attack. Uh, let's see here. You add the damage to the total damage roll. All right, so it's going to take eight additional damage, correct? Yep. Uh, and it succeeded on its throw, so it's not not uh, prone. Okay, it was worth the shot. Yeah, it was. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, Donlet is still your turn. You went through your attack action and your bonus, I believe, for the fire room. So. Yep. Okay, now we come to Jax. I'm going to shoot off two Eldridge Blast at it. Okay. So first blast comes through. You extend outwards an eight. Taps into the top end For of the bubble and just fuck. shears Thanks, off. man. You're firing from your, uh, right? Not your hands, right? I'm sorry. You're how you're, you're, not, you're firing the blast from your third eye, right? Oh yeah, a hundred percent from the third eye. <laughs> Get in there! Uh, <laughs> this is you have to pull the hoodie off, bag for the fucking third eye is not working here for God's sakes. Fire again! Sixteen will also not hit. Um, I'll use my bonus action to. Pop another uh, regular healing potion here. Okay. Uh, recover twenty-seven. You oh, hold on. That full. that nope. That that clicked the wrong one. Mm. That was a greater healing. Yeah. Well, I wanted a regular healing. Okay. Well, I'll undo it. I don't know why. Like I'm 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 lagging here in Foundry. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Over here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to use a greater. All right, so put the greater back into your inventory, and then you should have one last uh, one left for the regular. So go ahead. Correct. Honestly, you're probably there lagging because of the shield. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I was on regular, so that that's fine. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It, as so long as soon as I turn that off, it'll be fine. Okay. And Maybe. then that will end up my turn. All right, so recover 13 to you. Kanan, you're up next. That's hilarious. You turned off the shield and I lost visibility. So <laughs> <laughs> you can't see anything? Oh, I mean, I have I lost visibility on him. It was like he I lost vision on him somehow when the shield popped. It's like it was pushing oh. him past the, the wall. Or oh, something. I got you. I got you. It was just like he just vanished. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's a hell of a shield. All right. Um, yep, we're going to step out. 
Oh, you didn't even take the shield off. I have no idea why I lost vision. That was weird. Yeah, I took one of the animations off. It do a duo uh, to put two animations on. I see. Yep. Um, yeah, he's gonna come in with the bane of bear thing and try to try to finish this off. All right. Whackety thwack. Don't come back. <laughs> That is uh, going to be an 18 with the flank. Unfortunately, that does not connect as they hold the shield. You see the brakes sink against the sores. You crash down. They look towards you with the Plague Doctor-like mask. Motionless. Continuing to hold their shield. Do that. Come across one more time. How do you want to do it? Um, when he hits the shield, the, the shadows from the Chaos Slice are just kind of like cross across the entire surface of the shield and then it's just kind of like evaporate and it's going to swing right through split him down the middle right through you split him down the middle come here in the side down to the center point and they kind of falter down as you come into the blade you're like you're by the kind of belly the groin region where the blade currently sits they just let out a slight wheeze and a cough of blood and they just kind of falter down onto your blade and they're just there dead upright and he is going to immediately pull out the Staff of Tamaruk and begin recharging it on this gentleman. While well, standing on top of Donlin, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure he doesn't get back up. They got zombie shit going on. Uh huh. Hey, right, that's scene of combat. I ain't got wait. any questions. I'm going this way. Wait, wait, wait. What about that's and all the doors here that are locked? With people. Just hit the ice, it'll break. I can't let you go. I can't hit it that hard. If she's gonna follow. I don't recommend hitting it, no, it's about me out. These people uh, are possible people? I don't know. They may have... be safer where they are until we finish clearing out this area. You're I... right. So I, Damien, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't disagree, but I think for our sakes, we should probably open and clear these rooms so that nothing comes out behind us. That's fair. They are locked from the outside, though. Was that, was that right? Okay. You want me to break the door? <laughs> I break the door. Yeah, they have oh, padlocks on the outside. They're like cell doors. They also have little visors. Not you can kind of pull and look into them, so you can actually see if there's people in there. Oh, so we can see what's in there. Mm hmm. Oh, let's just go up and down and see what's in there then and talk to him. And if it's regular people, tell them you're safer here right now. <laughs> let's see if I can do a bulk here. Um, to change these real fast. Does that work? To look through on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. If you're close enough, the proximity goes. Okay. Let me do the right side. All right. One of these have a key instead of breaking a door. I don't worry about getting in. I can get us in without breaking a door. The thing that has to be broken is the ice wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna but break the ice wall to get back throughout so that we can have a square from there. All right. When you uh, look into the visors, there is uh, kind of town folk, people that have been very poor. They look to be uh, somebody that has maybe kind of been here a long time. They are malnourished, uh, need to be sated somehow of some food and drink. They're kind of clung themselves to the back of the walls of these small cells of stone, and they're just kind of holding themselves there and moaning every so often. But they look like they're alive, not, not reincarnated they're breathing. or anything. They look like, be, again, really tatterings of what previous clothing they used to have or what they used to be. They're kind of just holding themselves to kind of cowering in the back end. Not even a piss pot. Before you do that, I'm going to go search this dude real quick to see if I can find a key while you're busy trying to unlock it. Uh, I'm not going to unlock him. I'm going to smash I'm going to... Oh. oh. No, so first we're not going to smash. Second, I don't think we should unlock Pip. I think what we should do is uh, leave them here and come back for them after we've cleared the rest of this. We don't know what dangers are there. Okay, so you, do you want to smash the ice wall or not? Oh yeah, yeah the ice wall. Okay, let's, yeah. okay, just want to make sure. Not the doors. Oh, I'm sorry, I was not talking about the doors. doors. We talked about yeah. we talked about smashing the doors. Yeah, somebody may I mean, want to go check smash on. anything. You just point them and tell them to swing. Check on your friend. 
he seemed like he might need immediate attention. Uh, well, I'll give Baxter a health potion. Waste a health potion? I know. I, I mean, of course, give Gat Baxter a health thousand potion. Thousand health potions. <laughs> And I will buy all of the health potions I see from now on. The thing. So, so for the party, Jax will pose the question: uh, Do we do we wish to leave them in here, or should we get them out of here and up the stairs and away? I mean, they're toward the entrance. I feel like they could just, if they can walk, they can. If they can't walk, then yes, we should leave them in here where it's safe. If they can walk and make it out, it's pretty clear on the outside. We just came in, so they should just be able to walk out, right? So they walk into another maze and get blasted. So, Dom, I mean, you Pip is go to obviously Baxter. the leader of the group. <laughs> uh, Dom, then you go to Baxter and you begin to give them a potion. Is that what I'm saying here? Yeah, I'm not even going to check to see if he's alive. I'm just going to pour it in his mouth. Okay. You pour it in the mouth. And you see that we get choke on it violently, but they're still unawake. Well, that's unfortunate. Hey, pay that. I'm coming. I'm gonna search this dude's for anything, real quick. Like keys you're gonna you're or... gonna search him. Roll investigation. I'm gonna wait to see if Pip finds a key before I do anything else. Okay, uh, twenty one. Um, so they have a blackish robe that seems to be nice. It's on silk stitching and stuff. It has shown some wear at this point through the battle. Uh, maybe it's not even usable at this point. They do have two rings and a cloak underneath the robe that seem to be magical in nature. Uh, they do have a focus of a tiny dragon that's kind of spiralized with two heads coming out. They've been using that to cast their magic and focus that. They have no spell book, which might suggest something that they're not a wizard, perhaps. And then they have a, a small satchel, and it's filled with a couple different pieces of uh, certain like alchemy, right, reagents, uh, and then a tool, a kit right, to do alchemy. Uh, they do not have a journal, a book, or anything denoting of like, or noting like, you know, who or why they're actually here. So as you're scanning and sifting through things, uh, you can always take some more time to go through some of the alchemy components to see what they're actually making. But um, beyond that, there's not really personal possessions upon them. So there's no like love notes or letters. There's no like take home things or like, you know, anything like a key to a house or anything like that. So he's going to keep the magical stuff, but the alchemy stuff, he's going to just. Hey Lance, this is more your speed. Just if you want this stuff, I'm just gonna hold it up. Oh god! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That Fuck Lance. Me. <laughs> He's watching right now. I hope you know. <laughs> if, if, if David is watching right now, man, that'd be crazy because he's at the, he's at the dinner, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. Twitch, awesome Twitch on the phone. Got Twitch on the phone. Just to make sure that I'm not playing his character, so his character doesn't die. Huh. And with that, I'm gonna once I get all that stuff, I'm gonna like put the other magical stuff on me, but I'm gonna go to Baxter now. And then I guess if I see if, I, if Lance hasn't got there, I'll just give this to Lance on the way there. I can see where okay. Lance is right now. He's technically not on the board right now because oh. we're not fighting. Okay, well, I would have gave it to Lance. And so I'm going to go check on Bex. You're here. Um, you tried a health potion. You tried that. They're currently choking on the health potion that was given to them. Oh, he's Just cover his up. nose and cover his mouth. It's fine. Yeah. He's just going to kind of set him up. Like, don't die. <laughs> Like, put them okay. on the side, you know how drunk people are or whatever, so they don't vomit. Or gotcha. Don't vomit. Gotcha. You gotta put them on the side, say, don't vomit, please, don't vomit. Okay. Um, the potion itself begins to burble and come out of their mouth. They seem to kind of then go back to their regular breathing. They're still unconscious and restrained currently by the bondage around them, the numerous straps. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to remove the, uh, the token of this... Um, to see if that helps with performance, because I'm lagging too after since that shield thing went off. So, Let's see. Tom literally left him strapped to a table and shoved a health potion in his mouth. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help him. I don't know why he's there. I didn't know what happened to him, so I was like, I'm going to heal him. 
Oh, he oh my work. god! I'm gonna call somebody else. That's just what would I? Funny. I'm not exactly the Lance would be the more. I say Lance might be better at doing the medicine bit. So Pip's like, I guess if I can't do anything, he's safer there. They just think he's there, so he's just gonna kind of. I don't really know what else to do either. <laughs> If I cut them loose, then they're going to know we've been here. And I, I mean, the dead bodies would give it away, too. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, there's giant mounds of flesh everywhere. What's the best to so check for? It was mostly just to see if Baxter needs any other attention. Like, if he's fine now, or if there's like still a serious problem that we need to deal with. Your Baxter's breathing is normal. Um, seems to be in good health and condition. Uh, they didn't have any wounds or anything sustained to them. They just had like kind of their shirt removed from them and the trousers are still a part of their body. So it's in the process of whatever they're doing here, which is not looking great. But little barrels of blood, piles of organs, lurking, uh, bone saws, and instruments of medicinal purposes to extract organs and flesh and things uh it is uh not ru it is not precise it's more this is more like rudimentary in here so it would be more like just kind of taking out pieces in large uh, veracity yeah well that's not baxter baxter's not there so the medicine check of 13 uh, would probably suggest to a lance uh that they're under some sort of poison that would render them asleep It's like Sleeping that. Beauty, Pip. You gotta kiss him to wake him up. Yeah, he's probably... Just leave him there for now. Oh my god! Dude's like, nope, Damn. one night stand, I'm done. You guys are thinking <laughs> that Pip is in love with this dude. <laughs> he got the ring. I mean, he doesn't want him to die or anything, but... I mean... Can you tell us about the promise he made, though? About how weird he was for, you know, asking you to see him later? Yeah, well, he got the ring. <laughs> Pip is known for lying. Jesus. All right, he's an emotional liar. All right, are we done? Can we go? Can we go forward, since, Don? Since, like... Pip, since Pip is the leader of the group and he wants to get these people out of here, I would like to uh, try to open these doors with only the doors that have people in, inside of it, so I can get them out to the front. Okay, so you're just going to start working on the locks. Go ahead and make a uh, go ahead and make a check. Yeah. Uh, that would be Thief's Tools. Yep. And uh, Dexterity and Normal. Uh, that's going to be successful. I'm just going to say the doors open up for you. And uh, Jax will kind of direct them over here to the stairs like, hey, you know, come on, guys, uh, get out of here. Uh, we're going to clear out the rest of this place, but it may not be safe still. And as Jax is going back to the stairs, you'd like to take a peek over at uh, at uh, our friend there and see if any of his gear that he had in the hotel room is with him. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Is I think you there... meant check on his physical condition. I mean, yeah, absolutely, Kanan, absolutely. Okay. Sorry, my uh, doorbell went off I'm trying to message my wife here. I was, uh, well, anyways, um, you go ahead and roll investigation check for the items, and then the people in the cells, you're just opening the cells for them to leave, or do you want them to stay in there? No, just to just to get go, just get kind out. of follow the same path we came in. Yeah, get okay. out of here. So they're very much right. distraught. Oh, uh, they seem That's to be very role. confused as well. Uh, but they're malleable in terms of uh, kind of just telling them that their safety and that they can 